Hello and welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how you can reset all of the ECUs on any car. So why would you want to be doing that? Well over time the engine can pick up uh, bad information through bad fuel and things like that um, or if you've replaced sensors on the engine I'm doing it because I have replaced this um, suction control valve on this engine and apparently this needs to be coded or adapted to the engine which I don't have the equipment to do so so that's the principal reason why I'll be doing it on this vehicle so the tools that you'll need is a jumper cable and uh, something to undo the battery terminals on your car and uh, some rubber gloves so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get this uh, terminal disconnected on the negative side of the battery. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this rubber glove over the negative terminal so that the negative can't earth uh, and then we're going to connect the negative lead to the positive. Like so. So how this works is that in the ECUs there are uh, capacitors or small batteries and these capacitors store the data on the computer when you're switching the batteries. Um, if you have got a radio code on your radio at this point um, you would lose the radio code so you do need to make sure that you've got your radio code available to put it back in when you connect it. Not a problem on this vehicle uh, but I probably will lose all of my trip data from there. Uh, what we're going to need to do then is just leave this connected uh, for probably around about 20 minutes uh, just to discharge all of the ECUs. Um, I'm probably going to leave it a little bit longer than that. Uh, can't do any harm, it's just going to remove all of the electricity from all of the ECUs and then when they're reconnected they should start relearning. So it's been about 20 minutes now so we're going to get this disconnected. Remove that from the car and then we're going to go ahead and reconnect the battery. Like so, and then uh, we'll just tighten the clamp, clamp up and then we're going to get the vehicle started. So I've had the battery charger just to maintain the levels of power on all the ECUs whilst they uh, all power back up. I'm going to disconnect that and then we're going to start the engine. Right, so let's get the Key in, turn that all on. Interestingly, it's kept all of the data on the trip computer. Well, actually, it hasn't no. So, it has uh, reset the clock. The trip mileage has stayed the same. Average miles per gallon range is all reset. So yeah, did do a um, as good a reset as possible. Um, the trip uh, probably hasn't reset because it's probably got a, a micro chip in there to record that data. Uh, otherwise, if you disconnected and reconnected the battery, uh, you could try and uh, reset the overall mileage on the car. So that's probably why that part hasn't reset. So I'm just going to leave that with the ignition on for five minutes just to power everything back up and then we're going to start the engine. So I've switched it back off, um, making sure I've got the handbrake on. I'm going to put my foot down there on the foot brake and then we're going to go ahead, get the engine started, make sure the lights go out and voltages are all okay. If I start that again we should see yeah, high voltage, 11.8 volts. Yeah, that all seems to be good. Right, let's get this thing started. Well, that wasn't great, was it? 
I'm going to stop that again. Right, there we go. Finally got it going. Doesn't seem very happy. Now I'm going to leave it to idle with my foot on the foot brake for five minutes. Uh, this should allow all of the ECUs to basically uh, reassess the situation. We have actually got a smooth idle so far. It may not remain smooth, it may start jumping around whilst it's trying to reset things like throttle positions and uh, fuel trims. And it could even stall to be honest and then restart it. Here we go. Just started to do its reassessment. It just dropped the idle down there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the climate control off because that can uh, send information to the engine to alter how it's going to fuel. Um, so we're going to do that with the climate control off. As we can see, it's um, yep, yeah, did stall. Right, let's get that fired up again. So same process. Uh, foot on the foot brake. Down there. Handbrake on. Yeah, I'm just going to monitor that for about five minutes before we take it out for a drive. So it's been almost five minutes now and we've got an improved idle. Um, we've done this with the uh, hot idle reset before and basically sitting with your foot on the brake, handbrake on, um, <clears throat> basically the engine goes into a learning process, um, hasn't stalled for a couple of minutes now, it's still testing the idle, there we go, doing the test there so it's just seeing if it drops the idle speed down, how much fuel it needs to trim to bring it back up to the correct level and the same upwards there, look. So it's going through the test process there just to see um, what it needs to do to amend it. There we go, another little skip there. So we're just going to sit here until that sorts itself out. So, just had another stall, uh, restarted the engine and um, seems to be a little bit happier now. So it um, uses the suction control valve or the high pressure fuel pump to regulate the idle and um, obviously it is monitoring the idle and then using this uh, suction control valve just to, to change how much fuel um, and the pressure that you get from the injectors. So as I said I'd replace the suction control valve and it needs to go through a, a learn process or be coded and adapted. I'm hoping that this uh, reset will relearn it. It's possible um, if this doesn't work it would have to go to a Toyota main agent and pay for them to code in the suction control valve um, but we're going to try this first because it's uh, essentially free so as we can see it's still adjusting its idle there we go not happy there so it's been uh, nearly 10 minutes now of doing this uh, process um, in theory it could take up to 30 minutes for this to to go through um, but um, I'll keep you up to date with how long it takes before this uh, sorts itself out. So this has taken a lot longer than I expected uh, but we finally have relearned the idle. As you can see here now we've got a nice uh, stable idle and it's going to be coming up for 40 minutes. Now with the stable idle we can take this out for a test drive and just uh, get the uh, rest of the engine curve relearned. So I've just taken it out for a five to six mile road test and uh, everything all seems to be good. Actually drove exceptionally well. Engine was very quiet and smooth and powerful. So um, yeah, 
great uh, performance from that idle is all good so um, I'm gonna say that's a success uh, albeit it took me a long while to get there so um, yeah hope this video has been useful uh, put your feedback and comments down below if you've done this and it's worked for you